Welcome to Write With Love. I'm your host, Sarah Williams, best-selling author, speaker, and creative entrepreneur. Each week, I chat to passionate and inspiring authors about their journey in creative writing. Some are traditionally published, some do it themselves. Everyone's journey is different, and everyone has something interesting to say. We all love love and love what we do. Today's show is brought to you by our amazing fans and supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the show and get some awesome bonus episodes, go to patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams author to learn more. Now here's today's show. G'day, g'day. I'm Sarah Williams. Thanks for joining me for episode 32 of Write With Love. I'm recording this on Friday, 27th of July, 2018. I've had a busy podcasting week. I've interviewed six authors for future episodes, and four of those talented and award-winning authors are from overseas, so it meant working out time zones and some early mornings. I still managed to get some words on the page, though, and have named my next book, wait for it, The Dairy Farmer's Daughter. So happy release day today to Barbara Hannay for her new book, The Summer of Secrets, is out now, and I can't wait to start reading it. Now, here's a great opportunity for authors who are interested in self-publishing. Join the Spa Girls for a one-day in-person workshop that will teach you how to take your precious manuscript from polished to published. It's happening Saturday the 22nd of September from 9.30am till 5pm in Central Auckland. You'll learn self-publishing best practices, pre-production preparation, including finding an editor, choosing the right cover and writing a compelling book blurb. Also formatting your book for publishing in all ebook and print formats. Publish your book to a global audience. The girls will teach you how to upload your book to the key online retailers for an international readership, including Amazon, CreateSpace, Kobo, iBooks and Nook. You'll also get some marketing 101, finding your right readers, building your author platform, social media for authors and having a successful author mindset. All of this amazing information for only 179 New Zealand dollars. You can book this at www.selfpublishingworkshop.co.nz. Thanks for that, Cheryl, Shah, Wendy, and Trudy. And you can listen to the Spa Girls weekly podcast for tips, resources, and honest advice from four of New Zealand's best Kiwi authors. And if you are an author who would like a shout out, contact me or become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams author. Today's chat is with Helene Young, whose latest book, Return to Rose Glen, is now out. Helene is a great friend and mentor of mine, and I love chatting to her. So thanks for joining me today. And here's the interview. Today I'm chatting to Helene Young. Thanks for joining me, Helene. Thanks for having me, Sarah. It's lovely to be chatting to you. And we've known each other for a few years now. Um, We're both Queenslanders. Uh, So I originally met you up in Cairns when you did the uh, Tropical Writers Festival, I think in 2016 with Anna Campbell. Yes, that was a lovely event. And we're going back up for another one um, at the end of this year as well. In August this year, there's another Tropical Writers Fest. So we'll miss you if you're now down in southeast Queensland. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's like writing life, isn't it? You get connections in all sorts of strange and wonderful places. And it's nice to still be in contact. So thank you. Yeah, no, and it was absolutely fantastic. And I know you've um, read, reviewed um, my couple of last books. And of course, you've got the quote on the cover of my new book. So thank you for that. well done. You've done a sterling job of capturing country life and, and, you know, building some really lovely romances there. So well done. Watching your career with interest and I'm sure it's going to continue to take off. So oh, thank you so well much. Continue. So it's because of people like you who are really leading the way with Australian fiction. So um, I can't wait to hear. Tell us about your writing journey and how you got into it. Yes, my, mine's a little longer and a little more convoluted than, than perhaps some authors. Um, I was one of those kids that loved reading, always wanted to be an author. 
Um, but when I eventually left school, I really didn't have any direction, any idea of where I was going to go. I wanted to be a pilot. I knew that as well. Um, but really, there wasn't the finances available to just whip off and do a, a pilot's license. So I went off and did a host of other things before eventually, um, in my mid-30s, I came back to writing. Um, and that ironically came about because of flying. Um, we moved from Cairns, uh, from Brisbane to Cairns for, for my new job with Qantas Link as a first officer. And I suddenly found myself having been a flying instructor working long hours to working pretty nice hours in the little Qantas Link airline. <laughs> um, and I had time on my hands. So I sat down and and wrote that very first manuscript. Um, and they say that your first manuscript is always likely to be largely autobiographical. Now mine is about an Australian girl who goes to the Lake District in England and it ultimately falls in love with her boss. And for those of you that know me well, that's where I met my husband. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I wrote this story, bashed out, and it wasn't us, it wasn't about us, but it was very much set in the place that we worked. And there were people there that are way too clearly identifiable. I mean, you don't put people, you don't put real people in your books, but certainly they colour your story. So there would be people up there who would go, that's me. <laughs> so that story will never see the light of day. But it was because of that first manuscript, um, which I shoved in the bottom of a filing cabinet drawer, and my husband read it. Uh, when I was away and rang me to say, why did you write this? I had no idea you were even writing. Like, oh my God, how embarrassing. He's going to recognise himself. This is horrendous. <laughs> anyway, one thing after another, he was the one who said to me, you need to submit this. You need to do something with it. Um, and I sent it off to a company called Driftwood Manuscript. I don't even know if they still exist, but down in South Australia. And they did manuscript assessments. Um, and they sent me back 32 closely typed pages of what needed to be done. And the biggest thing was learn your grammar and learn to write again. You can tell a story, but you've forgotten all the basics. Um, the second great piece of advice was to go and join Romance Writers of Australia. So that's what I did. And I put that manuscript in a competition they used to run called the Emma Darcy Award. Um, and it came second to, ironically, Anna Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> Karen was the winner that year, Anna was the winner that year, so, um, and I went down to the conference and there was this amazing tribe of women with all this support and all these workshops that I could go and, and so much learning that I could do, so I just kept plotting away at it and plotting away at it, I'm not a plotter, I'm one of those people who sits down and goes on the journey with my characters and then gets to the end and goes, wow, now what do I do with all this? And then I start to plot it backwards and, and shape it and put a story arc in it and check the characters' arcs. But that first manuscript will never be that see the light of day, as I keep saying. But it really was like, I think of it as a, an apprenticeship. I learned a great deal about it. Um, I wrote four more manuscripts before the fifth one was finally picked up by Hachette and, and published as Border of Watch Rings of Fear. Um, and along the way, I really was never brave enough to submit it. I submitted once to Harlequin and waited 18 months and got the predictable, no, sorry, you don't meet our guidelines and we don't fit, you don't fit with our, our story group. And I went, oh, okay then, never mind. I still didn't really know what I wrote at that point. I wanted to write romance, but I also love action. I'm a John le Carre, tragic from way back. So I love action in a story. I love suspense in a story. I love intrigue. So. Until I finally, somebody said to me, you write romantic suspense, and I went, oh, do I? Oh, that's like, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. So there was a whole journey of discovery of the fact that there are genres and that you kind of need to be able to not necessarily pigeonhole yourself, but you need to be able to say to readers and also publishers, well, this is where I fit on your bookshelf, mm -hmm. because without that, they're a little less likely to buy you. For me, what worked in my favour was eventually somebody saying to me, right, what you know? And I went, well, what I know was aviation. Well, I went, oh, okay. Um, and at the time we were flying, I was flying out of Cairns and going up to Horn Island, um, looking down at this massive coastline that's largely unpopulated and thinking all the what-ifs. Uh, and then there was a group of, of young men that came to fly Fork on us, I think, who'd come from the Border Watch, the, no, that's what my name is for it, Customs, what were they called at the time? Coast Watch was the name of the organisation at the time, and they were Coastal Surveillance for Australia. And they had all these amazing stories about the sorts of things that they'd seen and done in their flying career, and I went, that's it? I get intrigued? They're mostly good-looking, strong young men, they'll make a perfect hero, <laughs> and now I just get some feisty heroines to go with it. Um, and a big part of my writing journey has been wanting to tell the story of women, um, strong, capable women or ordinary, everyday women who simply step up to the plate. Mm -hmm. Because I think I think women sell ourselves short. I think we, as a, as a 
as a gender, we've spent too long going, oh, maybe not, whereas we need to be out there loud and proud saying, yes, of course we can do that. Um, so being able to put those sorts of characters in stories has been wonderful and they reflect the sort of women that are around me, the sort of women that struggle with juggling motherhood and careers and, and parents and all of that, the, the great big workload that goes with quite often being the woman in the family are the sorts of things that I wanted to be able to show in my story. So hopefully I've done that. Um, certainly with the new book, I've taken even more of a step in that direction. Um, but back to the journey of the <laughs> So Hachette eventually picked up my fifth manuscript um, after it finaled in the American Golden Heart competition. So RWA America runs a thing called the Golden Heart for Unpublished Manuscripts. And that book, I can't even remember what its working title was at that stage, Beyond the Borders, I think. Um, it final. So I went to America um, and then when I came back to Australia, I pitched to Bernadette Foley at the RWA conference um, and she picked it up from there. And, and again, for those of you writers, uh, uh, viewers who are writers, um, that first letter that I got back from Bernadette said, the manuscript's not there yet, mm -hmm. but if you'd like to consider, and then she went on to two paragraphs, then I'm happy to read a resubmission. So I always say to people when they say, oh, I got a rejection, I say, no, 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 tell me, read it to me. Is it really a, reje a rejection? Or is this an opportunity to work with the publisher or the editor or the agent and then resubmit? So it's, it's important for, for writers to remember that a no is not necessarily a no. It might be a not yet. Mm. <laughs> and then if you're prepared to take that extra step, um, and it took me six months to incorporate Bernadette's suggestions before I resubmitted. Yeah. And then they, they bought it in the two book deal for it in Shattered Sky. So, um, Fantastic. You know, and yeah, like you said, sometimes that can be the most important training you can do. I know um, when I worked really closely with my editor, that was, I'd done so many workshops before that, but was working with the yeah. editor one on one. She was telling me specifically, this is wrong or you can do this better. Oh yeah. my God. It was just like, oh, okay, I get it now. <laughs> yeah. And, and I know people hate, some writers, friends of mine, hate editing. For me, that's really where the joy is. I love telling the story, get that down, but it's always a rough and dirty draft because I don't plot, <laughs> because it just goes with the flow organically. Um, and that means the editing is where you really start to bring it into shape. You, you realise how easy it is to shape it by shifting scenes around, by looking at is it actually moving the story forwards. And if it's not, well, probably it was fun writing it, but that needs to go to the cutting room floor. Um, and you learn that and you just continue to learn with that. And a good editor is just a gift. I'm so blessed that I have Ali Watts at Penguin. Um, in my corner, both because she supports my stories and, and the new direction, but also because she's just very insightful. And she she can dust she can dust out 6,000 words out of a manuscript and I won't even know they've gone. But you'll go, wow, that's a skill. So, you know, editors have a, a specific skill set and I think it's important that we do learn from them, but also that we're open to their suggestions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get to go, no, it's my story, this is staying because this is something I feel strongly about. But, you know, nine times out of ten, they're right. And even if it's just a matter of thinking about it and reworking it, you don't, you're not ceding control of your manuscript to them, but you're working with them. And that's what it should always be, collaborative, to make it the best possible manuscript you possibly can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, we'll, we'll talk about Wings of Fear. So it was your first one published, and that year, in 2011, um, you won the Ruby, the American... Romantic Book of the Year. Congratulations. It's, it's, it's the Australian Romantic Book of the Year. I'd love it to be the Rita, but it's the Ruby. So <laughs> it's only the Australian version, but that was still, that was a turning point for me. So, um, and this is one of those, you know, conversations we're having where we, we bear it all. So I had Burning, Border Watch had come out in 2010, Shattered Skies came out in 2011. And unfortunately, much as I love Shattered Sky, it came out at a time when the Red Book Group fell over and that took out Angus and Robertson um, and about 30% of the book selling market. Cyclone Yazzie ripped down the coast of Queensland and put Brisbane under floodwaters. Mm. So poor little Shattered Sky sunk without a ripple. Um, it's done since, you know, trundled on quite nicely, but at the time, sales figures weren't there. So Ashet said, we're really sorry, but we don't want your third book, which I've been working on with them. Um, so it then became a matter of I had an agent by then, lovely Claire Foster from um, uh, Curtis Brown, 
And she said, well, there are other options. Let's let's see who else is around. So we pitched to Penguin, um, and Penguin ended up accepting the, that particular story. Um, but 2011 was a turning point because I'm sure that competition win helped enormously um, with getting a third contract. Um, it made me feel like the end wasn't nigh <laughs> because when your publisher says, listen, I'm sorry, but your figures aren't good enough, it just, it's gutting. But at the end of the day, it's also important to remember this is a business. Mm -hmm. They're not in it for a charity. They're in it to make money. And a book, when you have a, an, a publisher who's championing, champion, I can't even say the word, but you know, is, is your champion, um, as Bernadette Foley had been for me at Hachette, um, it also, it's not hard, not easy for them to then have a book that they invested so much time in, not do well on sales. So, and that can happen for any number of reasons. But it, it's important not to take it personally because at the end of the day, it is sales. And just like if a designer puts out a top and nobody buys it, well, they're not going to be asked to, to you know, do the collection for next summer because it's not sold. Mm -hmm. So you have to remember that when you're writing that there will be rejection along the way. There will be times when your sales figures don't stack up. But it's not the end of the road. It may be that you need to look at a different genre or it may be it just hasn't worked this time for any number of reasons. And there are many authors like myself that came out at that time in 2011 who all had a little hiatus before we got the next book out because the world just got in the way. Mm. And that's why. Yeah, and the publishing industry is very up and down at the moment. Um, a little bit like what we're saying, you're on your yacht, um, <laughs> your catamaran, and we're seeing the sky in the background kind of coming in oh, and out. Yes, <laughs> Do I need to shut the curtains? No, it's fine. It's really cool. If anybody seasick, that would be horrendous. <laughs> I thought I probably should have warned everyone early on that you're on your yacht. <laughs> boat. Yes, I'm, on, I'm at home. Well, you know, so really, and it, I know that keeps flaring the light, so I hope that's all right too. That's but um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm at home on the boat, so all is well. <laughs> Which is the wonderful thing about writing. You can do it anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's portable, absolutely portable. And and we've all seen photos and we've all done it where you're writing on a kid pickup or you're waiting for somebody to arrive at an airport and you sat there madly bashing away on your laptop or your iPad or whatever it is that you're writing on because you've got 15 minutes, half an hour spare time. So let's get some words down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important. It is. <laughs> Excellent. So you've got this new book out and we should talk about Return to Rose Glen. So it's mm. out on the 2nd of July 2018 as this goes to air. And um, so tell us the premise and what inspired you to write this one. Yeah, well, there's, there's a beautiful book. I've just picked up my author's copy. So, you know, that's always an exciting moment where you want to stroke, stroke your book, baby. Um, it's a departure from my romantic suspense. And I guess it's come out of the fact that I'm now older. Um, when I first started writing, I was 35. I'm now middle of the 50s. Um, I don't know when that happened. I really don't know when that happened. Um, but things start to become, different things start to become more important. Um, and over the last three years, we lost both my mum um, and my, my mother-in-law also died and also a lovely old friend who was in her early 90s um, passed away in Trinity Beach. So in the scheme of things, it got me thinking about matriarchs um, and the fact that when a matriarch does die, they leave a vast space behind, a power vacuum in many cases, um, but it also changes the relationship between the siblings mm. because everybody's got a different opinion of that parent and it's interesting the way those different opinions colour the way we see our own childhood um, and how we perceive that we grew up and I find that sort of stuff fascinating. So I went, right, this is what I want to write. Um, Penguin was very happy to see me go off in a new direction. They're like, well, romantic suspense, it's doing okay, but we think that there's more you could do. So if you want to try that, give it a shot. So it's been nice to have that support. But it does make it almost like you're relaunching a new brand in some way because I'm sure some of my readers who loved the, the action pack books that I, I used to write will be going, well, there's not quite so much action in this. Hopefully, the fact that the characters are still there and they're hopefully quite rich and the landscape is still North Queensland, they'll come with me on this change of direction. Um, but it's very much a book about families. It's about three generations of women who are, who are drawn together underneath the, the faded homestead roof as the matriarch is, is wishing that she was dead because she's old and she's had enough. And I think we've all had grandparents um, and some of us mothers who've got to that age where they've just simply had enough. Um, and, and that's a difficult thing to come to terms with as well. And again, siblings deal with it in very different ways. 
Um, the backstory, I guess you could call it, is the idea of elder abuse, which was something that wasn't strongly there to start with in the story. But the more I started to talk to people, the more horrible, terrible, tragic stories that I heard of family members doing the wrong thing. Um, and it was fascinating to go, well, why did your mum let that happen? Well, because she loved him. Right, okay. And getting my head around the fact that a mother or a father could be forgiving of a child's misbehaviour, mm-hmm. an adult child's misbehaviour, because it's still their precious child. And it's very hard for them to then turn to the other siblings and go, you're right, that was the wrong thing. So newspapers are full of it. It's something that's become topical, and this book's taken three years to write. So in that time, it's become a whole lot more topical. So I'm kind of glad that it's out there. Um, And I hope that readers, when they've read it, will pick up the phone and ring their children or ring their parents and say, I love you, and say, hey, at the end of the day, we're in this together because the end of life is a journey that we should all take together, not say, well, there's my elderly parent over there and I'll just lock them up in a nursing home mm-hmm. or, you know, or vice versa. I do know plenty of older people to who put quite strong demands on their very busy children as well. So it's got all those mixed bits and pieces in it, this story, as well as at the heart of it there's a secret, a family secret, um, which will take a very long time to be revealed in the book. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's all set west of Cairns, so um, I'm sure you know the Chiligo area yeah. and Mount Morgan. Mm. And I hadn't necessarily planned on it being out there, but I always loved the Chiligo limestone caves, and there are caves in this book. So that was a natural place to set it. And then a friend who's a helicopter pilot took me for a flight over Mount Mulligan and I just went, oh, my God, the escarpment has to be in the story. It's got this amazing presence all of its own. Um, And it's surrounded by cattle country. It's also had some tragedies. Um, It's one very big tragedy with a mine up there um, back in the early 1900s. Um, but yeah, it was for me. It was important, and uh, and they're the sort of things that I think of as a serendipity. If he hadn't said, "Let's go for a fly," and we hadn't gone over Mount, Mount Mulligan, there would have been a whole train of, of thought in that story that didn't actually happen. So you know, I think as a writer, you take your opportunities where you can find them. Yeah, absolutely, and it is a stunning area up there. I lived in Cairns for four years, and uh, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. There's more than just the reef and the rainforest. There's the whole outback. Uh-huh. It is, and it's it's amazing out there, and many people don't get that far out. And really, Chile goes not very far west of Cairns; it's only a couple of hours. Yeah. So, so if you're going on a holiday, go to Chile. Go. (laughs) (laughs) The limestone caves are as good as Janolan caves Mm. down in Sydney. So you know they really are extraordinary limestone formations. Yeah, Mm. absolutely. (laughs) So you're doing some promotion, um, and you're going to be touring the southeast Queensland. So if we're lucky enough to be around Brisbane, the Sunshine Coast, which is where I am, uh, we should come and check you out. You'll be touring with Barbara Hannay and Christine Wells, um, both of which I've interviewed. I'm not sure if Christine's interview is going to get out before or after yours, though. Well, her beautiful book, The Juliet Code, is out now. And if you like the historical... Um, action-packed spy story it's wonderful I think she crafts her characters so beautifully Um, but as well that the setting is you know she she started like writing historicals and I think that that eye to detail really shows through in her story so um, yeah grab the Juliet Code and I'm desperately waiting for Barbara Hannay's new book to come out hers is about four weeks after mine I think um, that hers releases yeah. and her stories have always got so much emotional heart in them they um, they're yes. always always a wonderful read so really looking forward to being on the road with the two of them for the week in Brisbane and we get to Toowoomba as well so so that'll be wonderful uh, what else have we got promotion wise um, we're off to Harvey Bay in September for the Lines in the Sand Festival uh, and prior to that of course we've got Tropical Writers Festival in Cairns which Barbara and I are doing a joint book launch we're hoping that it's going to be a high tea so if you're into high teas please send your friends along for afternoon tea with us I think it's the 10th of August high tea at the uh, where, whatever the conference hotel is so um, we're really looking forward to that um, Barbara is somebody who when I first started writing was very much a gentle mentor um, and we had a little group in North Queensland she was she was the leader of that group with, with so much to give and so much that she was willing to share. So, yeah. yes, she's it's kind of, you know, going back to mum. Not that she's <laughs> anywhere near that old, but you get that sense of she's such a wonderful, in, inclusive person. Um, it, it's great to spend time with her. And she is. Writing. Yeah, Barbara's the reason.
Louise and I write uh, romance. She was she was the one who did the workshop, my first workshop, and she's she did it on romance and yeah, yes. just everything she said clicked in. I go, oh, that's what I write. So I remember as soon as that workshop finished, I went home and I plotted what became the Brothers of Brigadier Station. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. So um, I have told her that. Yeah, yeah, I've told her, and oh, um, yeah, so I I owe a lot to her as well. So yeah, she's. She's held very deeply in my heart as well. <laughs> yeah, she's lovely and very generous. Yeah, and you'll be at RWA in um, Australia yeah. in Sydney. Back to RWA, I'm on a panel with um, Christine, Jeanette, uh, no, not Sasha. Um, oh, there's two others. Jeanette, Paul, did I say Jeanette? Yep. <laughs> there's five of us on it. I've just lost one name there. Anthea Hodgson. Oh, yeah. One of the WA girls. So, um, and we're doing a penguin panel for Love Between the Pages. And part of what we'll be talking about is the different ways you can have love and romance in the story, um, and how your genre can change as you write. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, at all. And that's something that, as a writer, you probably do want to develop and grow in different areas. So it's good to be able to get out and explore those. So we're looking forward to that panel on the Saturday yeah. um, the RWA conference. So, yes. Fabulous. Um, and then you're off to WA for the West Coast Fiction Festival yeah. in November. <laughs> so excited about that. So we, we have to go to England for we don't have to, but we're going to England for my lovely niece's wedding, which we're very excited about. So we're putting Ruby into a marina berth for a month. We'll fly off and do that, and then we'll come back uh, to wherever Ruby's been left. Um, via Perth. So really looking forward to the West Coast Fiction Festival. Um, 60 odd authors, I'm sure they've probably got a few more by now, but it was 60. Um, they've got some big name stars coming from overseas, but just about anybody who's anybody in the rural romance world will be there. So you've got Rachel Johns and Fiona Palmer, I'm pretty sure Mandy Magra is going, um, Pamela Cook is definitely going to be there, Jenny Jones is there, um, Tess Woods, she's not rural, but Tess Woods will be there. She's one of the big organisers behind it all. Um, and, of course, it's all about share the dignity and raising money for, for handing out, essentially, sanitary pads to homeless women and, and young girls. Mm. Um, I think that's something that we kind of take for granted. I know something when we were packing to go to New Caledonia and Vanuatu, and we didn't get there, but we're going next year in the boat. One of the things that they suggest you take is the sorts of reusable sanitary pads because the girls in those countries don't have access the way we do, um, and you forget how expensive they are. So if you're on a budget or you're homeless, then it's something that's really difficult. Yeah. It makes a big change to your life if you can access it. So I think it's a wonderful thing that they're doing um, and very happy to support it. And hey, I get to play with writers again and readers. <laughs> that's so it. That's a wonderful thing to do in November. So And WA, I don't know, we had a holiday there. It would be, well, it's probably 10 years, maybe longer than that. Anyway, it's a while ago. It was a... Uh, one of those impromptu holidays where other holiday plans fell over. We spent a month in WA just going, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so really looking forward to going back to visit again and have another little sticky beak. So yeah, I, yeah, and I think they're trying to do the West Coast Fiction Festival every two years, um, I think. Yeah, last time I saw it. Should, you know, and, and WA in so many ways gets left out. I did a book tour there um, for Half Moon Bay, I think it was. I went on tour in WA. And they were just so delighted to have somebody from the East Coast because people don't make the track and go, it's not far. Now, maybe my perspective is skewed because I'm a pilot. It's like, it's just a flight. <laughs> Come over here. I don't get it. Because it, it's a beautiful place. They're really welcoming. The food that the library's put on was like, I'm going to go home and stone her. Wait, would you stop feeding me? But it was just delightful. And the readers were so welcoming. So you know, it was a lovely place to go. So if you're out there, and you're looking to plan a book tour, go to WA, they're amazing. <laughs> All right, so what's what's next? What are you working on now? Um, the next book's just started to take shape, um, and it's it's another family drama um, with a little bit of a difference. So they'll, and there may be a character from Return to Roseland who gets to make um, an appearance because she doesn't get her full resolution in, in the story. It's not didn't need to be part of the, the story arc. So I think it would be nice to pick up her thread and, and carry on with that. Um, and it's going to be set probably more in the city because I think the issues that I'm dealing with, with it, with, and again, it's we, we'll have three generations, but they won't necessarily be family. There'll be three generations of women that are dealing with a similar problem. 
um, of being a woman in the modern world and, and the fact that it can all fall apart and then be quite difficult to, to just carry on. So with all the expectations and when you get a job. Some of it came from being in Hobart where we spent um, four months touring around Hobart in the boat. And while we're in Hobart, well, not Hobart, we do it around Tasmania. You couldn't do a Hobart for four months in a boat. But um, <laughs> around Tasmania and we were stopped in Hobart um, and they were talking about the fact that there were issues with accommodation um, because Airbnb had just taken over so much of the affordable accommodation. So there were people living in tents on the showground in Hobart going, it's freezing cold and pouring with rain. What 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 is going on in Australia that this sort of thing is possible? So that's kind of the general direction that's going, that it's easy to suddenly find yourself in a position where you don't have a roof over your head. Does that make you homeless? Or if you've got friends to camp surf with, well, you're okay, aren't you? Well, no, you're probably not. Yeah. So it's having a look at that and how that can happen um, so suddenly and so easily. Um, but then there's a whole lot of other stuff going on with families. <laughs> and sisters and mothers and aunts. and <laughs> So it's fun. Yeah, fun no, explore. that's awesome. And I love family sagas and I, I love the matriarch as well. I've, I've always got a big matriarch in my series too. So um, that, that sounds absolutely fantastic. So Return to Rose Glen's out in July, a couple of days before mine. I'll sneak that in there. <laughs> my, my next oh, one's out you. July 4th. Yours is July 2nd. <laughs> You should be having a launch party on the 3rd or something, a combined one. <laughs> we'll do a Facebook Live. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's fantastic. So what's your website? Where can we find you online? You can find me on www.helene. So it's spelled H-E-L-E-N-E, -E, young, Y-O-U-N-G, as in not old yet, dot com. <laughs> so that's www.helene.com. -E -E, dot com. And it's got all the links to the other social media platforms. And my favourite one is my Instagram account because I get to put up all the photos of the beautiful places that we get to visit. So go check out the Instagram account. <laughs> yeah, yeah, beautiful photography. I'm so jealous. It's gorgeous. <laughs> well, that, so many lovely places. <laughs> that was fabulous. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Helene. That's right. My pleasure. And all the very best with your new release as well. I look forward to reading it. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Jump onto my website, sarahwilliamsauthor.com and join my mailing list to receive a free preview of my books and lots of other inspiration. If you like the show and want it to continue, you can become a sponsor for just a couple of dollars a month. Go to patreon.com forward slash sarahwilliamsauthor and remember to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a review of the podcast. I'll be back next week with another loved up episode. Bye.